Here's a look back at last week's two-part video of a match between my friend Nash and me recorded earlier this season. And thanks so much for all of the positive feedback. We were so encouraged by it that Nash and I decided to tee it up again this past weekend as the golf season in Vancouver nears its close. Please keep giving me the feedback. It's always great for me to know what you'd like to see. For our match this weekend, we chose Northview Golf Club in Surrey, Canada. It's a six-time host of the Air Canada Championship on the PGA Tour. It tips out at 7,000 yards, and we played it at a slightly more modest 6,500 yards, where the course still offers plenty of bite. Position A on the first hole is the middle of the fairway covering these bunkers on the right. And this hole is quintessentially Northview, with elevation changes, a dog leg, and a well-protected green. I opt for driver here, and hit it pretty much bang on. The fairway runs out at about 275, so Nash opts for a hybrid on the same line, perhaps a bit more aggressive to the right here. Nash is still away here, hitting an 8-iron from about 150, uphill and into wind, and he certainly picked the right club because this one goes to about 6 feet. That wasn't it. Hold the pose though. I cut over. Hold the finish. That's not a good shot. So I'm still away here, trying to get up and down from about 40 or 50 yards. And the pitch is decent, and I'll have about 15 feet now. <laughs> that certainly feels good. And Nash slips out here, and those are two pretty different routes to a par. The second is the first of back-to-back, -back very demanding par fours, stroke holes one and three on the card. And this one basically requires two pretty good golf shots. That's a good effort from yours truly. And this one is on a rope. I'll have about 150 in, playing 160 with the slope. And with the ball above my feet, I pulled this one and hit it the right number, but it'll be green high left. Nash with just a wedge in overcooks his a hair, but it will catch a piece of the green on the left. That's a good one for me, and I'll have six or seven feet for par now. That one's right in the jaws, but stops a few rolls short, and Nash will take his par. It's my turn to lip out now, and I'll have to settle for bogey. This is the most demanding drive on the golf course, with two tall trees framing the hole on the left and right, and it's a downhill dogleg into a very small and well-protected green. That's as best as I can do. And Nash saw this as a cut, and it doesn't quite cut as much as he wants to and catches a cart path bounce here. Oh, big bounce. I'm away, but in the middle of the fairway, this one lands short and trundles up, though. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. Ooh, baby. Look at that. Nash was slightly obstructed by some tree trouble here. But his also lands short and gets up there. Oh, yeah. I'm away with a pretty tricky putt here. And I committed the cardinal sin of finishing out without really taking a good look at it. And it's going to cost me another bogey. And even with the benefit of looking at my putt, Nash underreads his, and it's another tap in par. The fourth hole is a double dog leg par 5, meandering up a hill before finally going down for the last 150 yards. You actually don't see the green until you're about 100 yards out on this hole. Another good one from me here. Nash didn't love that one, but Ooh. the rest of us did. Oh, that's good. Oh, it's good, man. That's the right line for me, and it will leave me about 50 yards in. And with the ball above his feet here, Nash overcooks this one, and it's actually fortunate that it gets stopped by a greenside bunker. I'm playing for short left here, but I landed a few paces short of where I needed to, and it doesn't make it on. That's a great effort from the bunker, and it will leave Nash with practically a tap-in birdie. Nice shot. 
This is one of the few putts I've ever uploaded on the channel where you can really see the break. I have the break read right, but we'll still have about three feet for par. Nash makes his birdie, and my putting woes inside five feet continue. The par 3 fifth is all about club selection off the tee. There's a false front on this green, but you can also go long quite easily into a hazard. And of course there's water guarding the green short left as well. I opt for a 6 iron, and it lands right at the top of the ridge of the green, before rolling all the way back down. I miss Nash's tee shot, but he hit a 7 iron to about 15 feet. That's a really good lag putt from me, and I'll have short work for par. And for the fourth time in five holes, Nash almost drains a birdie and settles for par. The uphill dogleg sixth hole dares you to chew off some of the hole off the tee by carrying these bunkers on the left. Guarding the green on the right are another set of bunkers, and that's a bad place to miss as it's a tough up and down from there. I opt to hit a driver right of the bunkers, hoping for a draw, but hit the dreaded straight ball here. Nash trying to play over the bunkers with the hybrid hits easily his worst shot of the day, basically skying it and missing short of the bunkers. We knew this one was good the second Nash hit it, and we'll see just how good it is when we get up there. And meanwhile, with an actual look at the green, I proceed to hit my worst shot of the day. But the club twirl is free. That's about as good of a pitch as I can hit from there. And it rolls out left of the pin and I'll have 12 or 15 feet for par. And that's another unlikely up and down for me. And with the benefit of looking at the line, Nash makes a birdie himself. The par 5 seventh has a blind tee shot, but if you can manage to catch the fairway, you'll hit a speed slot and have a chance of going for the green in two, despite a creek guarding the green in the front. That's a bit right of my target, but Nash has kind words for me. Bingo. Position a. And I wanted to show you Nash guiding me through some course management here. So it's 229, downhill 10 yards, so it's 219 to the flag. My carry on my forward is 210. So do that, and then aim for the left edge of the green because the way yep. out the water shape. Are you good out of bunkers? Uh, no, but I'm not bad. Like, I'm just as happy yeah, in the so bunkers. Just though. go over the, like, see that red stake down there? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, so just go over the red stake. All you have to do is cover 200. And, like, with a, with a cut. That last part was not the right idea. I was already on a fade lie, so cutting this You're leads right. me to hit a pretty bad shot. So bad it's good, in fact, it's right. short of the water. <laughs> Meanwhile, Nash with a 5-iron fires a dagger here. It lands pin high and releases about another 15 feet past the hole. This one released a bit more than expected, but I'll have a good look at birdie. And I was eager to get up and hit it, and maybe the golf gods punish me for it. And I'll settle for par. Nash for eagle now. Get in! Oh. It's yet another near miss and he'll make birdie. The eighth hole is classic Arnold Palmer design. Offering you a safe option out to the left, or offering you a look at driving the green if you can carry it about 250 to the front edge. I joke that I only carry 235, and it's right on line. Oh, that old 235. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that felt a lot better than the result looked. Nash with a three wood now. It's a bit squirrely, but it's going to find a greenside bunker. Great shot. That's a fabulous shot. Wow. And I also hit a good wedge here to about five or six feet. Another miss for me. And this time it's a tap in birdie for Nash. If you're enjoying this new format, please be sure to subscribe, and like I said earlier, I'm eager for your comments on what other types of content you'd like to see. The ninth hole was playing a bit downwind and I hit my 190 club. It's on the number but misses the green just to the right. Nash meanwhile letting up on a 5-iron, 
It's a decent one, but it pitches and stops right at the front of the green. I had an awkward stance here and wasn't sure how I was going to do, so suffice it to say I was thrilled with this outcome. And Nash now with his longest putt of the front nine. It's just fine and we'll both have about three feet to tidy up for par. And we both do just that. I took an unconventional route to my three over, failing to convert on some short putts, but getting up and down a couple of times when I didn't deserve to. Nash, meanwhile, hit every green in regulation en route to a four under 32. And if you're eager to see how we did on the back, be sure to tune in on Thursday for the second half of the match.